everybody, my name is Henry Cross. I'm the Associate Assistant Head Teacher at Johnny Boys School uh, and I look after the Faculty of Humanities. So what I'm going to be speaking to you about today is some of the teaching and learning strategies as well as uh, marking feedback that we apply um, across humanities, but I'm going to really zoom in on history um, to give you a flavour of what we are doing at Johnny Boys. So this is our whole school remote learning offer. I'm not going to go through it in detail with you because I'm going to show you instead in a moment, but you can see there uh, from what we've underlined. So clear instructions for work sets, either written on Google Classroom, which is the platform we're using, or orally, which we can use through Loom software. Um, but we also use Moat as a tool on Google, uh, as an extension of Google as well to give um, verbal feedback to students. Um, at least one synchronous lesson per class per week. And again, the reasoning for that is uh, RE, for example, uh, only has one lesson a week for Key Stage 3, so it makes sense to have one lesson a week. Um, but for other subjects might have more than that. Uh, we create new material each week for a different topic. We try to offer a lot of variety, which I'll show you in a moment, through PowerPoints, through retrieval practice or projects and videos. Uh, feedback, again, is also varied. Um, so we use, obviously, written feedback on Google Classroom, but we're also trying to make use of uh, Moat as well. Uh, and then also using these self-marking retrieval quizzes. These are brilliant for assessing students' understanding and knowledge, and also it's gr great for actually uh, teacher workload as well, um, because like it says, it's self-marking. Uh, and in terms of monitoring student engagement, uh, we have a weekly subject engagement tracker, which allows us to make contact with students weekly if they're not engaging with the work. So uh, for history specifically, our key stage we offer is two lessons per week, uh, one pre-recorded Loom lesson with extended writing task and a self-marking quiz, and then a synchronous lesson. And this can be, again, a guided uh, example of how to do extended writing, or can be using an online learning platform such as Seneca Learning. Um, so for Key Stage 3, uh, in Year 7, we, we try not to change the curriculum very much at all because we don't want to undermine the integrity of our offer um, because we think our curriculum is broad and balanced and we don't want to compromise that. But if, so, for example, for Year 7, uh, we were looking at um, which Tudor Queen has the most influence on religion in England. We actually moderated this to which Tudor Monarch because we, couldn't, we didn't really feel we could do Queen Elizabeth justice uh, looking at this, so we tried to make it a bit broader. Uh, and Year 8 is no change. It's looking at how different people experience World War I. Each lesson will start in this way. So it'll be a Loom lesson, uh, just like I'm doing now. Uh, it'll be a retrieval task at the same for each lesson. They've got the title race to learn. We try to keep it really similar to what we've got in school to have that familiarity. Uh, and then the Loom video will model with them uh, got through guided practice uh, the lesson. So, uh, and that's been a bit of a work in progress, you know, because when we first started doing it, I think a lot of us were going through the activities, uh, asking the students to pause and saying how long it would take to do it. And we weren't always going over the answers necessarily. And then after a week, I kind of thought, you know, the reason we didn't want to do that was because we thought, well, students could skip ahead in the video and just uh, listen to the answers and write them down. And, uh, but, but ultimately, if you've got students that actually aren't really getting it and aren't really understanding, I'd much rather actually go through the answers and explain um, and then just get it that way anyway. So, so um, we have like refined our practices as we've gone along. So we often will obviously start with a retrieval task We'll go through the answers, we'll model an activity for them, we'll do a few with them, and then they do themselves, and then we'll go through the answers for the rest. Any of the, the extended reading, we always read aloud to support those students. Um, and at the end of each lesson, there's always a 10 mark, 10 question multiple choice quiz uh, on the core knowledge for that lesson. Again, okay, that's self-marking. And to fin finish, we always could provide feedback, either using moats or using phone calls or written back feedback if we, if we think it's necessary. So this is a typical example of a year uh, eight lesson this is uh, about the western from and you can see the slide here we've got our do now um so four uh, five questions to recall from the previous lesson we've got our title our ready to learn some keywords with definitions and then we've got our task so reading through our handouts uh, and then list or, or listen to the teacher readouts so this is miss moonen and then answering some questions um and we make a point of the teacher always reading aloud so to support the students and then going through the answers once we've, we've extracted them how much time they expect to spend on that task. This is an example of the quiz. So um I come out here. So um we use Google Forms because it's simplicity, so you've got 10 questions, um, and all multiple choice, and it's assessing that key knowledge for the students. Um, really easy. We've just got one of those for every pre-recorded Loom lesson. 
And that will tell us straight away if the students have picked up any misconceptions. And then we can use that information from these quizzes to inform our planning for their next lesson. Um, and we'll go through the answers to these quizzes and address any of those misconceptions that have cropped up. Uh, lesson two for key stage three. So again, this is an example of a little bit of extended writing. So this is describing two features of the life on the Western Front, a four mark question, um, with some, some success criteria and sentence starters. So this is kind of the, this is the asynchronous practice that students be expected to do. Um, again, this is an example from one of our um, uh, lower attaining year eight students. Um, and again, they've just taken a photograph and uploaded that to the classroom. And then our teacher, uh, Ms. Moonim has also given some feedback. And there's an example of mode feedback just there, where you record your voice and give feedback, and also some written feedback, uh, which provides um, them, uh, you know, what's gone well, but also areas to improve as well. So we, 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 we try to train our history students in uh, using two pieces of evidence and two pieces of explanation when they write in paragraphs. So it's going to be beyond the, the peel paragraph to make sure it's um, it's rich in subject knowledge and, um, and explain fully. Um, and this is just another example of live supports within the Google Classroom chats where you can reply to students' comments um, really quite easily. Um, yeah, and get and get feedback and you can obviously see that there. Uh, for Key Stage 4, the, the, it's, it's very similar. The only difference is we add an extra lesson. So they get two pre-recorded Loom lessons a week with extended writing tasks and quizzes and then a synchronous lesson which offers guidance based on retrieval practice. Um, so um, yeah, the curriculum hasn't been changed at all for this, not been altered. They're continuing to learn their new their, their key stage four curriculum. For year eleven, it's a little bit more varied because it might mean that the teachers are using the time to uh, use retrieval on prior units if they've finished teaching the content. Um, and this is again, this is another example of a typical lesson. I've attached all the Loom links in here. I'd love, I'd love to show you some of them. It might be more interesting than just listening to me, actually. But uh, I, if you want the information, I can share it with you afterwards so you can see. But yeah, you've also got the retrieval starter. You've got a guided teaching practice task. You model it for them. And then this is the extended piece of writing that they have to do here. Um, and, and then obviously they have the Google Forms quiz at the end to assess, to assess that core knowledge. Um, another example there. With the um, synchronous, we, we've been using Seneca quite a lot and we found that really useful because we can set assignments. I'm just going to show you an example here, if I can. Um, we set them assignments on uh, topics they've already studied, so we use it just for retrieval because um, we feel like if we're teaching them new content, we want to give them as much guide support as possible. But uh, if they're retrieving uh, prior, you know, uh, topics they've already studied, we feel more comfortable with them doing that um, synchron synchronously. Um, and it's, it's such a useful platform um, if you've not used it before. It's a little bit like if you use Tassimai for science, it's a little bit like that for, for history or, and lots of other subjects. But um, this, for example, is the mark sheet for that particular student, that year 10 class. And it, it gives them a mark for all of the topics they study on, uh, it shows you how much time they spend on it. And the great bit about it as well is you can um, reassign it. So any questions that don't complete, uh, or any they get under 50% on any of those units, you can just reassign it and they have to keep obviously keep going until they get um, as many marks as possible. So it's really useful practice uh, using Seneca. And we found the students really like it. Um, yes. Uh, and then again, another example of moat learning, moat feedback. So when they do an extended piece of writing, like an essay, um, we will give uh, kind of more detailed feedback. So here's an example here. But again, I, I don't think you can hear it if I play the recording. Um, so this is um, one of my year 10 students uh, who's done an essay on the League of Nations. And then really so easy, I can I can just click on the, the moat record here. And I just record my voice and it's got, an, you can record up to one minute and 30 second uh, snippets of your voice. And I can give them feedback and then you can respond to, to that. And um, really simple way of giving them detailed feedback much quicker as well. Uh, but we are, yeah, I'll come to that now. Um, something we're looking at, so in terms of best practice, uh, we have, uh, began to roll out uh, virtual certificates for history, which you can see example of there. Uh, we have been sharing a lot of the good work the students have been doing via Twitter and other platforms. And we're particularly proud of this, actually. This is something we've, this is something we've been using for a little while, these meanwhile squares to try to broaden the curriculum. Just to give an example of what one looks like. Um, 
So this is the Me and My Last Wear example, uh, which really helps us to broaden our curriculum. So just recently, we off, that's our core offer for Key Stage 3 is one pre-recorded lesson a week and one synchronous lesson. But on top of that, we now set an optional kind of challenge task to really challenge the students um, and also broaden their curriculum. Uh, we do the same for Key Stage 4, but we tend to use more kind of guided practice around uh, exam questions. But me, this is what we use for Key Stage 3, it's called Me and My Last Wear. So we, whilst we're studying about the Indian War of Independence, for example, uh, elsewhere, the Second Opium War is being fought, and so it allows us that allows us to get them to think about things that are happening in other areas of the world, but at the same time as what topic we're studying. So it really helps to broaden their curriculum for them, and it's all research based. We provide the links for them, and then they have to do the research and answer the questions. So that's something else we're, we're proud of and we're happy with, and is working well. Um, and then something I'd encourage all um, staff to do, actually, really is to actually include uh, student feedback. Uh, and we very recently did a, um, a quiz for students to give us feedback on how they thought the remote learning offer was going. And we really, really quickly got, um, you know, over, I think we're up to 500 responses now, and had overwhelmingly positive feedback uh, from the students about particularly the quizzes, because the boys, they, they love that instant feedback and, and self-assessment. Uh, they love the Loom videos, um, and they, a lot of them have taken up the challenge tasks as well. So it's really beneficial to inform our planning. Um, and in terms of uh, next steps, really for us, uh, we want to keep rolling out uh, more optional challenge challenge tasks uh, for Key Stage Three and Key Stage Four, keeping them optional. But we we started using these last week, and we we're really surprised. I think anyway, uh, we had about I, I don't know maybe as many as a quarter of the students from our classes choosing to do them. Uh, some with like varying degrees of success, but the fact that they're actually trying to do it is really impressive. Um, and again, of course, it is optional. Um, we're also looking at trying to provide other opportunities for students to broaden their subject knowledge using the Meanwhile Last Where Homeworks, but also providing them with um, a database of uh, websites which provide like virtual museum tours and things like that. Um, and uh, continuing to work on our development of Key Stage 4 exam skills. And at the bottom there, we've got some Loom walkthroughs for how to answer all of the questions uh, for uh, Key Stage 4 students. And they can use that to help model good practice when we set them exam questions um, remotely. Okay, so that's actually that's it. I hope it's been useful. Um, I think it'd be more useful if you could see a lot of the, the links I've got there. So if you do want uh, any more information, please feel free to get in touch and I can share this with you. Thank you.